Well, Dave, let me show you the rest of the museum that we have in here. You got it. Now, who was this museum built by? What the so this is museum is built by the Holt family. Um, they're a great friend and partner with the um, park and the museum and programs that we do here. And they have a very large private collection. So what they did is they actually built this building in the museum and is now being leased by state parks so that we can make a lot of their collection accessible to the public. Wow. Now, Louis, Traveler's Rest is definitely more well-known for being a Lewis and Clark historic site, but a lot of this collection is a little bit later, so we're really excited to be expanding to kind of expand the story of what happened after Lewis and Clark left the area. You got it. So what they did is they did a really great job of creating some immersive environments. What that means is they basically built exhibits that you can actually go into. It makes you feel like you've actually been walking down the streets of the 1850s, 1860s Montana. Wow. So the first place we have here, this is the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> there is, a, you know, every good Wild West town has a saloon. So, of course, they built one here with your poker table. And then attached to it we have is Madame Mary's proprietor. Ah. So Madame Mary was a very important businesswoman of the area. Um, so it was important not to leave that part of the story out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, uh, oh, is this uh, looks like uh, logging? Uh? So, yeah. So part of the story, of course, is a lot of the business and industry that was really first part of Montana was the logging industry. So what we have here, these are also a little bit later, of course, are showing models of some of the logging equipment that would have been used in the area. Um, they really kind of show you how technology has changed over time. And this? And this is the land office. So this really shows a lot of when people were still using paper and pens. Um, we have some early technology, even later, showing a phone board. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the early phone boards from Missoula. And kind of the old technology and all the bulky technology that was needed to really keep a city and state running at that time. So over here, another really important building you would need in the 1850s in any beginning town is a general store. So this is an example of some of the supplies that a general store would carry. General store means they had nearly everything that you needed. If they didn't have it, they would try and order it for you. So most of the things you see here are cooking equipment, groceries, um, also just general canning supplies. So this would have just been the place to get all of those basic home supplies that you couldn't make yourself. Um, in a coming up and coming town in the Wild West, you would have needed to make as many of your own things as possible, but when you couldn't, the general store could help you out. This is a church. Uh, a lot of people ask if we hold mass here. We do not hold mass. Um, it is built as an exhibit. Um, it's really to house a lot of this collection here. You can see we have some beautiful Catholic robes, um, as well as some rosaries and statues. Um, a lot of the paneling on the other side of the room, um, while it didn't come from a church, it does come from an old hotel in Missoula. Um, it really kind of shows you that feel of textures um, that were created with wood paneling in the past. This would have been a laundry tent. Um, most women, of course, at home would have been doing their own laundry. Um, but a lot of people, and of, it was just a men out here without a wife, uh, would have taken their items to a laundry. So here you see we have... The, where the worker would sleep in the way back because you didn't leave your business back then. Right. Um, but we also have some hand washers. Um, a lot of people don't think washing machines came around until we had electricity, but there were a lot of hand washers here. Um, we also have uh, a furnace, which was really important for ironing. Um, these would have been um, hand irons. The handle is actually removable so that you can iron with one hot piece of metal and then just switch your handle to another hot piece of metal so you don't have to stop and wait for your metal to reheat through an ironing process. Um, a really interesting piece is right in the middle is we have a steam powered, basically a steam iron. It's a rolling iron where you can push your pieces through and for like sheets and flat sheets and tablecloths and have them ironed out for you without having to use the hand irons. Wow. This is our Native American gallery. We have our kind of welcoming statue here. Um, but most of the collection in here is actually a lot of moccasins, beading, clothing. Um, these are even later, probably late 1800s, early 1900s. But it's a really great collection of showing the meticulous artwork um, that went into a lot of these pieces. These would have been definitely for ceremonial pieces, so early powwow culture, um, rather than for everyday use. Wow. Just uh, what what 
What handiwork, huh? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, those kinds of bees are called seed beads because they are the sizes of seeds. This all would have been is hand done. Um, so you can imagine the time and energy it would take to actually get that much detail into one uh, one piece of clothing or moccasin. And then this piece, this photo uh, really gives a great image of how much Missoula has changed over time. Um, this photograph is from about 1890. And basically where you're looking at today is where the University of uh, Montana is. Um, you have the Clark Fork River running along the left. And downtown would be just on the other side of the river. You can see there's some houses over there. There's already some development going on. Um, the Native Americans still using this area very heavily. And the mountain in the back is where kind of the M would be now. All Mount right. Jumbo. Well, hey, I want to thank you so much for your time, taking out of your time. And then now tell us, what are your hours and what are your fees? So our fees for Montana residents are free. Out-of-state license plate cars are $5 per vehicle. Um, our hours do change seasonally, but in the summer, we are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven day, or 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. You got it. Thank you so much. All right.